Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Michael for the Internet Brands Auto Group. In today's video, we are doing another install for our Carb Legal LS3 Swap Buick Roadmaster Project. Progress, my friend. You're missing the one thing. We're in a Ford to go rescue our GM. But look how friggin' cool that is, you guys. Wow. Today, I was actually going to work on the suspension installing the coilovers, but I noticed after doing the testing with the sway bars that my brake fluid had turned pitch black. Basically, the reason for that is that the, the top of our, my master cylinder, there was a little gasket that runs around the top of it. It was off just a touch, which meant that air was getting in and brake fluid was sloshing out. So I figured, you know what? Maybe it's time to address the brakes. And we've got something amazing to put on the brakes. We've got sent over from our friends at Willwood. We've got the Willwood D52 brake upgrade kit. Now this is for GM products. I think it's from like, oh, I don't know, 1978 through 96. This will go on a lot of different GMs that have the similar spindle as this particular wagon. All right, so the rotors are gonna stay the same size, but we're upgrading to a two piston brake caliper, which is red and says Willwood on it. Looks absolutely cool. The, they also sent over a set of Willwood disc brake pads to go with it, and this 14 inch stainless steel braided line for to help with the ease of installation and uh, you know performance and brake pedal feel and all that stuff. So we're gonna go through the whole process and first thing we gotta do is jack up the car and then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna uh, pump out the old gross brake fluid, put in some new stuff even before we start working on it. So that way when we go to bleed them, it'll suck down the new fluid into the uh, the new stainless steel lines. So let's get started. So first step with the B bodies is removing the two caliper pins. These are three eighths hex nuts, hex bits rather, I guess. I don't know. I never know the right vocabulary. That's my thing. So now we got the bearing cap off. This is always the bane of my existence, these things. And I'm gonna take out the lock nut and cotter pin here in a moment. So I'm gonna check out the bearings see if I even need to replace them. Then we'll get the new calipers on. Here's the old one just hanging out here. And then the new ones. Oh my gosh. That's gonna look so good. Awesome. One can of brake clean later. We've got the spindle degrease in 29 years with a crap away from the, the brake caliper uh, support bracket here. Counted the number of teeth on this back collar, matches up with the new rotors. Yeah, the other, these old bearings, they look okay. I think I'm just gonna replace them anyway since I got new ones and fresh grease, so that'll just save me a touch of time, but we got everything degreased. We got the new bearings in the new rotor. The inner bearing has its own little seal, and then the outer bearing is held on with this washer and the spindle nut. So let's see what we can do here. It's gonna be a little tricky, don't fall off bearing. Here we go, okay. See, it wants to push the bearing out. And we're just gonna say, no, no bearing. You go on there. Ooh, like a glove, y'all. One and one sixteen. Okay, righty tighty. Spin the wheel. Oh. <laughs> All right, now we back it off. That should have seated the inner bearing. All right, we're backed off. Now we go to hand tighten, finger tight, I guess you should say. And now we gotta find the cotter pin hole. Cotter pin hole, cotter pin hole. There we go. My trusty pliers here. Guys, since I am not a professional mechanic and I'm not trying to tell people how to do this, I'm just showing you what I'm doing. This is more of a documentary than a how-to guide. Please feel free to give advice down in the comments about better ways to do things. If you see me making a noob mistake, I am not above any of those corrections as long as you don't call me dumb for trying to learn this myself. Just always loved cars and always wanted to do all this stuff myself, but get nervous that I'm gonna break everything. And now, even though that's still possible, I want to use this as a chance to learn and grow as an enthusiast. Yeah, like right now I'm probably missing like a very obvious and easy 
way to bend cotter pins out of the way. There we go. Okay, bearing is on. Progress, my friends. Okay, so check this out. Super easy install. Got the, the dust boot cap on. And then all you need to do is you put, there's two different types of brake pads. One has this, I don't know if you guys can see it from here, this, the outer one has this little flat cap that kind of holds it into the caliper. So this inside brake pad, there's nothing really to hold it. So you gotta kind of slide the caliper on, but not let it drop down. It was kind of weird compared to OEM stuff where there's like, you know, a little pin that would kind of like, or clamp that would hold it in place. But anyway, then you put both caliper bolts in place and you torque to 35 foot pounds for those. In here is the banjo bolt. You can torque to 15 to 25. Don't exceed 25 on the banjo bolt, but that's nice and torqued as well. So we're almost done here, you guys. You gotta, oh, and by the way, make sure that your wheels clear first. Do a little test before you start disconnecting hoses and brake fluid goes everywhere. Okay guys, so this is why DIY stuff is always a challenge. You get 90% through the job and then you find out you're missing the one thing, the last piece of the puzzle. And so what's happened here is that, so we've got the new rotor, we've got the new caliper, we've got the new pads, we've got the new stainless brake lines, we're ready to go. But the new stainless brake lines, this doesn't fit with the hard line from the OEM system on the Roadmaster. So I am gonna go to the auto parts store and Okay folks. It is now like six hours later. And let me tell you what happened. This is kind of funny. Talk to Willwood. Again, thank you for the brakes and the stainless steel lines. I know I have the correct parts that are supposed to be on my car. So this is what Willwood calls the chassis fitting. It's a 3AN line that runs the stainless to the 7 16th banjo bolt in the back of the caliper. And it's supposed to connect to the 3 16th or 3 8 factory line that is an inverse flare, what have you. But it turns out that I have 10 millimeter bubble flares, but I decided to do the passenger side as well because I located a store that is about 45 minutes away from me in the morning where I'll be able to get these two fittings because they, because uh, Willwood recommended. But holy smokes, what a day it's been. Okay, we're not done yet. We still got some work to do, but look how freaking cool that is, you guys. Wow. Day two of the brake build. The wagon is parked. And we're in a Ford to go rescue our GM product. <laughs> okay guys, I came up to Orm Brothers up here in Northridge. This is a speed shop. They made me custom brake lines exactly that'll fit my application and the kit with the 716 Banjo and the M10 adapters i'm very excited thank you to these guys for helping me out paid full price for this but happy to uh help out a local business this is super cool and uh, now we got to drive back and get the car running Woo! it's in and now we need to bleed the brakes, of course. Thank you to everybody. AutoZone, Orm Brothers, Willwood for helping me out with my dilemma. This hose fits perfectly. It's about the same size as the, the original OEM fitting. I don't think we're gonna bind on anything, but we'll double check that, of course, as we get the wheel on and turn things lock to lock. But uh, yeah, we're doing good. And we still have fluid in the reservoir. So we just gotta make sure the the fluid drains into this line and we bleed it out of the top. But yeah, so now we can get the old brake caliper out here. Man, you mechanic YouTubers are amazing. Like one-handed camera operation and mechanicking. Holy smokes, I'm really amazed. But there's the old guy, but and here's the new one with two smaller pistons. And the stainless steel line. All right, let's get the other side done. Okay, brakes are installed, wheels are on, and torques to spec, which I believe is 100 foot-pounds. Anyway. Now we'll go for the maiden voyage. We made it to come out of the garage, and we stopped. I 
I did some testing, let's get out the draggy. As I said in a previous video, this is more anecdotal to see the trends, to see if we are improving. With the stock wheels and tires, I was able to get uh, a 3.74 second, 60 to zero, over 162.02 feet. Then we added Michelin tires on the American racing wheels, and that time dropped to 3.24 seconds, over 146.02 feet. And this morning, I went out after betting the brakes. I got several 3.3 seconds. Uh, one was 156.68 feet, so a little worse. And then my best time for the morning was 139.2 feet. So we're down to about 139 feet. So we improved by about seven extra feet by just adding the brake calipers. I know that the numbers aren't reducing things dramatically, as dramatically as the tires did, but the brake pedal feel and the amount the car, like the way they're grabbing up top, it feels like we're slowing down quicker. So I'm wondering if the idea is that it like, it's slowing down quicker up top, but the overall weight of the car, you know, you just can't, you can't beat physics after all. This is still a 4,500 pound boat, right? So I just kind of feel like as I'm driving this, the brake pedal feel here, you know, is just pretty, you know, it didn't, it didn't do that before, you know, it's so, it's so nice. Really, really impressed with the pedal feel. It's, it, it feels like it's grabbing more, even if the numbers, I'm not able to recreate numbers that are dramatically better than, than previously. So I think we're going to keep testing this to see what happens as the brakes get a little bit more time to to wear in because I just, it didn't do this before. And I'm really, I feel a little bit more confident with the braking, you know, maybe they're just grabbing in a different way. Maybe because it's two pistons, the, the, the pressure is more even across the rotor, but overall I'm, I'm really impressed. And on top of that, you add the looks, the ease of installation, the fact that this is direct bolt on, you don't have to get an extra spindle. You don't have to worry about grinding anything. It's about as easy as can be. The only thing you have to do, just make sure that your fittings are correct before paying a lot of money for a stainless steel kit. I was able to go to a local speed shop and they were able to give me the 7 16th banjo bolt fitting to a 12 inch 3AN line and the proper M10 bubble fitting that my wagon has. Hope I don't know what yours has, or maybe you have a different car completely, but yeah, that's kind of like the, the, was the biggest headache. But otherwise, if I hadn't done the rotors and the bearings and I hadn't run into the problem of having the wrong stainless steel line, this is l probably an hour job, you know, maybe a couple hours, but it's really simple. And uh, the results I think are good visually. I think they're good in a performance sense. And then from a driver's perspective, I think they're excellent. And so I'm kind of stoked to see where these goes. We will report back in later. Anyway, thank you so much for watching you guys. Uh, I hope you all are well and safe. Oh, in the next episode, we're gonna do QA1 coilovers all around. Kudos to all the people who are really good at this because uh, I'm getting my butt kicked but uh, success. And QA1 upper and lower front control arms. Well, there wouldn't be rear, well, I guess some vehicles have control arms in the back, but anyway, on the Buick, upper and lower front control arms, QA1 coilovers all around. I'm very excited to do this. I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with the tools, being a novice. And then swearing, and then relaxing, and then swearing again. You know, just trying to stay safe and, and, and working my way through these things, but I'm having an absolute blast. I think the car already looks cooler and I think it's already performing better, but it is a little bit slower, which means we need to make it faster as soon as possible. Anyway, see you next time.